I never even knew I could draw. And I had wanted to paint because my mother was a painter. She started when she was 39. I bought in a silent auction at a community fundraiser, painting lessons with Becky. And that started it. So I, I worked with her, actually started as a class, and then I began to work with her privately. I got a very start late in life with a lot of stuff. You know, getting married late, having children late, oh, the pumpkin rides, all that. It took up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And so now I have, I have the time and it's, it's great. And so if you look back at where you kind of were, um, what was it, two and a half years yeah, ago? Yeah. If you look back at where you were when you started versus where you are now, uh, what would you say are the things that you have developed most? It was just great working with Becky and Pam because they have different emphasis and strengths. I mean, they're both incredibly talented painters, but their styles are very different. So Becky uh, would say, for instance, in the beginning, because I wanted to paint portraits, likeness is not even necessarily that essential as she always emphasized sh uh, value, color, and shape. Then when I moved on to Pam, I'd show her a drawing that I did, and she said, do you mind if I mark it? And I said, not at all. Uh, the mouth is too small anatomically. But that was her emphasis. It was much more theoretical, sometimes kind of hard for me to grasp. Now I understand the things that she was saying about the implied line, a line that disappears behind a subject and then comes back. or. Oh, I, it took me the longest time to understand what the heck the invisible clock was. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's aligning the, especially with the features of the face, according to the numbers, the way the tilt of the head would be. They are so kind, so patient, so indulgent, so encouraging and good humored. It has made a huge, huge difference. Do you know where your style is going? Yes, I mean, I can see, I can, see that I'm not painting like either one of them. But again, Becky has taught me those fundamental things and, and Pam was very, very clear about the importance of drawing, which obviously I, I don't know enough about. Drawing is very, very difficult. So you, you often draw, uh, or paint rather, your, your pups. Yes, yes. You know, I was profoundly dogless from the age of seven to 47. So. Moving here, we immediately started getting these English setters. Now I've painted them a lot. What the, the two that died this summer were my muses. And we have a puppy. And the puppy has been painted many times. But you know, particularly black and white dogs are just so graphic. And, and, and they are soulful to these English setters. So I will frequently paint the same painting three times or Four. How do you decide when your painting is finished? The more confident, the more relaxed, the more experienced, it's clear to me when a painting is finished. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes Becky will say, okay, you're finished, stop. But a through line is your comedy, and there's some commonality oh, yeah. that you found between yeah. your history uh, in working in comedy right. and comedic writing and what you're doing now. In order for comedy to be funny, it absolutely has to be real. In order for it to be real, you have to recognize it, observe it. And, and this is something that painting has taught me to do. But I think what, what you're really talking about is that some of my paintings are also kind of comical. That the through line from observing comedy and creating goes more to the serious paintings. But at the same time, I think I've used my comedic background in painting whimsical, some whimsical paintings. I have not historically been the most disciplined person in my life, but I will say that I love this so much. I love it so, 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 so much. I just concentrate and paint and paint and paint. I mean, painting, I think, is just such a great thing to take up at any time of life if you want to look at stuff.